cardiovascular system includes a heart right many blood vessels and the blood so those are the parts of this system blood vessels include arteries veins and capillaries okay and blood circulates inside this system so heart is the most important organ we will see the anatomy of the heart the location of the heart in the body the shape and size shape and size of the heart how it looks like from outside then we'll talk about the circulation of blood we know blood circulates inside the cardiovascular system what are different types of blood circulation present in our body we we'll see that then we'll talk about the coverings of the heart surface of the heart wall of the heart heart muscle under the microscope coronary circulation and the valves inside the heart location of the heart heart is located in the thoracic cavity this is the thorax right inside the thorax you have the cavity thoracic cavity here yeah. so this is the thoracic cavity heart is located inside the thoracic cavity in between two lungs in between two lungs and about two third part of the heart is located in the left side and one third goes to the right side that's why we say heart is mostly located in the left side right two third part in the left side heart rests on the diaphragm so you have diaphragm here the heart sits on the diaphragm okay and if you see the position of the heart from outside you can determine the location of the heart by counting the ribs that is called the surface anatomy you can press here and count the rib this is rib number 1 we know this is clavicle right so rib 1 2 3 4 5 we can count that the heart is located between the second intercostal space this is first intercostal in between the ribs space this is second so second to fifth third fourth fifth so we can now tell that heart is located here between the second and fifth intercostal space okay uh, from outside the surgeons will do that right count the ribs and will draw a line that your heart must be there and will open that so that is the location of the heart we see here heart is located between two lungs rests on the diaphragm now the shape of the heart heart is a conical shaped organ conical shaped organ that means it has a pointed end that pointed end is the lower left corner of the heart lower left and that is called the apex of the heart makes sense and heart also has a base from where the large blood vessels arise or large blood vessels are attached in the superior surface top part is the base so apex and 
a base. Heart, the size of the heart is the size of your fist. If you make a fist like this, this is the size of the human heart, okay, roughly. Circulation. In human body, we have different types of circulation. What are those? Number one, pulmonary circulation, systemic circulation, hepatic portal, hepatic portal circulation. These three circulations are present in adults. One circulation that is only present in the fetus, that is called the fetal circulation between the mother and the fetus, when the fetus is in mother's body. Okay, so these three are present in adult human body. Is it clear? Okay, now pulmonary circulation is between the heart and lungs, okay, heart and two lungs, that is pulmonary, pulmonary means we know that lungs. Systemic circulation is the circulation between the heart and the body, whole body. Hepatic portal circulation, although we are not going to discuss this uh, right now, Hepatic portal is between the intestine, that means GI tract, and the liver. So, nutrients are taken from the intestine to the liver. That is the portal circulation, hepatic portal circulation. Hepatic means liver. Okay. To understand the pulmonary and systemic circulation, if you remember a couple of things, it becomes very easy, really easy, uh, although uh, sometimes students get confused. Remember a couple of things. Left side of the heart, in your heart, left side contains oxygen rich blood that means oxygenated blood okay right side contains deoxygenated that means carbon dioxide rich blood So very simple statement, left side deals with oxygenated, right side deals with deoxygenated blood. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat> Another is, that is number one. Number two, remember that ventricles pumps the blood out from the heart. Atria receive blood from outside, from outside. Very simple, ventricles send the blood to the outside, atria, receive the blood from outside, just opposite, right? Okay, so, now, heart has how many chambers, anybody? Four chambers, very good, human heart, right? Okay, so human heart has four chambers, so this is the heart, it has four chambers, 
this is the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. So this side has what kind of blood? Right side. Deoxygenated. And in this side? Oxygen. Very good. This is the right side, left side. Now you tell me, heart sends blood to the lungs. We know that. Heart sends blood to the lungs. Why? To get the oxygen. We all know that, right? Heart sends blood to the lung to get the oxygen. Blood goes there to get the oxygen, right? So, what kind of blood should go to the lung? Deoxygenated or oxygenated? Going, what kind of blood should go to the lung? Going to get oxygen, right? So, that means it doesn't have oxygen. So, deoxygenated blood goes to the lung and gets what? And becomes oxygenated and comes back into the heart. So what kind of blood comes back into the heart? Oxygenated. Is it clear? So oxygen rich blood gets back. Just very simple. So that is the pulmonary circulation. Heart sends what kind of blood again? Deoxygenated blood to the lungs. And oxygenated blood gets back into the heart. That is the pulmonary circulation going to the lung and coming back into the heart. Okay. So now you tell me. From which side the blood should go to the lung? What kind of blood should go to the lung? Deoxygenated, right? So from which side? Right side deals with deoxygenated, right? Right side contains deoxygenated. I mentioned that you have to remember. So, who sends the blood to the outside of the heart? Ventricle. So, now we know right ventricle sends blood to the lungs. What kind of blood? Deoxygenated blood. So, right ventricle sends deoxygenated blood to the lung. That's the carbon dioxide rich blood through pulmonary arteries, pulmonary arteries, pulmonary, in pulmonary circulation you have pulmonary arteries, pulmonary veins, that's all. So, who takes blood out from the heart? Artery. Who brings the blood back into the heart? Vein. We know that. Arteries take the blood out, veins bring the blood in. That is the rule. Okay. So, pulmonary arteries take deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. Then in the lungs, blood gets oxygen, become oxygenated and gets back into the heart, right? We know that blood, in which side it should get back because it is oxygenated now. Left side, right? Who receives the blood? You also know atrium. So from the lung, pulmonary veins bring the blood into left atrium. Ventricle will not receive the blood. Ventricle will send the blood out. Okay. So that is the pulmonary circulation. This is pulmonary vein. Pulmonary veins bring the oxygenated blood, blood into the left atrium. Blood will go in same to same side always, not to the other side because there is partition here. Okay, so left atrium will then send blood to the left ventricle. Always remember, atrium gives blood to the same side's ventricle, not to the other side. Okay, we'll talk about that. There, there are parts here. Yes, make sense. Now you tell me, in systemic circulation. What happens between the heart and the body, right? So, what kind of blood your heart should send to the body? Oxygenated or deoxygenated? Oxygen. We all know that, right? Our body needs oxygen. So, 
from left ventricle now left ventricle has oxygenated blood and we know that ventricle pumps the blood to the outside right so oxygenated blood will get out to the body not to the lung to the body who takes that blood out that's the aorta out from the left ventricle oxygen rich blood will get out to the body that is the part of systemic circulation then body gets the oxygen from the blood right blood takes the oxygen to the body body gets the oxygen and gives carbon dioxide to the blood so blood will become what deoxygenated now you tell me deoxygenated should get back into right or left side right side where atrium or ventricle atrium this is blood from outside we know that so deoxygenated blood from the body will enter into the right atrium that's the carbon dioxide in the right side so who will be ana kava ana kava Vena cava bring deoxygenated blood from the body into the right atrium. Aorta takes oxygenated blood from the heart to the body. Vena cava bring deoxygenated blood back into the heart. So that is the systemic circulation going to the body. Oxygenated blood going to the body. Carbon dioxide rich blood coming back into the heart from the body. Okay. Always think very simple. Why blood goes to the lung to get the? So what kind of blood should go there? The oxygenated. Why blood goes to the body to give the oxygen, right? So what kind of blood should go there? Oxygen-rich blood. Okay. So if you just keep that in mind, it should be very simple. Structure of the heart. Heart has double-layered cavity. serous cavity that is called the pericardium double layer serous membrane pericardium and in the wall of the heart you have very highly specialized muscle tissue that is called the cardiac muscle highly specialized muscle tissue cardiac muscle inside the heart you have four chambers two atrium pleural is atria two ventricles also you have valves inside your heart you have four sets of valves two sets Are AV valve and two sets are semilunar. Semilunar. Okay. So four sets of valves. Two AV valves are right AV and left. AV. So right AV valves and left AV valve. Left one is also called mitral. Probably you have heard this one. Left AV valve is also called mitral valve. <coughs> and you know. I, I just mentioned few minutes ago that atrium gives blood to the ventricle, right? From atrium, blood goes to the ventricle. So that is guarded by that from atrium and ventricle. Uh, how the blood uh, will be controlled? That is controlled by AV valve between atrium and ventricle. That's why it is called atrioventricular valve. Semilunar valves are located. at the beginning of the aorta you have here semilunar valve this is aorta 
and the pulmonary trunk. So you have two sets of semilunar valve, aortic and pulmonary. Pulmonary trunk takes blood to the lung, aorta takes blood to the body. We know that. So at the beginning of those two big arteries, we have semilunar valves. Okay. So those are four sets of valves. Valves control the flow and direction of the blood. Which way the blood will move and how much blood will get out. That is controlled by the valves. Blood vessels in the heart. In your heart, you have two types of blood vessels. Some blood vessels, those are large blood vessels. For example, this is your heart here. This is the heart. So, some blood vessels take the blood out and bring the blood in. Those are large blood vessels. Just to take the blood out and in, bring it in. <coughs> and in the wall of the heart, you have a small blood vessels. These blood vessels are not to take the blood out or in, to supply oxygen and nutrition to the wall of the heart. Those are small blood vessels. These are called coronary circulation. These blood vessels together called coronary circulation to supply blood to the wall of the heart, heart muscle. But these large blood vessels to take the blood out to the lung or body and bring the blood back from the lung and body. So that two types, right? Large and small. Inside the heart, you have highly specialized tissue structures. Those together form the conductive system, also called conduction system of the heart. So just know that inside the heart, you have highly specialized tissue structures. They together form a system that is called the conductive system of the heart. We will talk about the conductive system in detail, so just know that. Coverings of the heart. How many members you have in pericardium? I said two. The outer one is called parietal pericardium, inner one is called the visceral pericardium. And in between those two, you have a space that is called the pericardial cavity. So now, this is the heart. So you have what? One layer of pericardium is inner one that is attached to the wall of the heart. So this is the visceral pericardium, uh, closely attached to the wall of the heart. And another one is like this, outer one. So this is the parietal pericardium and the one inner one attached to the wall of the heart this is the visceral pericardium and you see the space here that is the pericardial cavity cavity inside this pericardial cavity you have small amount of fluid pericardial fluid so, make sense? In the cavity, you have small amount of fluid. That is called pericardial fluid. How much? About 
10 to 15 milliliter fluid. This fluid is slippery, lubricate, lubricating fluid. When your heart contacts and relaxes, those two membranes, two layers, move like this. Because of that fluid, friction doesn't occur. Make sense? Because the fluid is slippery, lubricating fluid. Now, uh, sometimes what can happen, uh, more fluid can accumulate in that space and if just think that more fluid is accumulated here, then what will happen? The pressure around the heart will be more or less. More. So heart will not be able to expand enough. Make sense? Because pressure is more outside. So that will prevent the heart to expand and blood will not be able to get in. Okay? That is called tamponet. T A M P O N A D E. Tamponet. Increased pressure around the heart that prevents the expansion of the heart. Inflammation of the pericardium is called pericarditis. Pericarditis is a clinical condition that refers to the pathogenic infection and inflammation of the layers of the pericardium. When pericarditis Occur. You know, itis is the inflammation, right? Conjunctivitis, meningitis, tonsillitis, pharyngitis, nephritis, hepatitis, you can make hundreds. So, itis is the inflammation. So, when inflammation occurs in pericardium, those two membranes get solid, thick, and rub each other. Make sense? And that causes pain. When, because friction will occur, right? And that will cause severe pain in pericarditis. The patient feels pain. Another thing happens in pericarditis is in acute pericarditis, a lot of fluid accumulates in the pericardial cavity, but the quality of that fluid is not good, not slippery. Okay? So that is another issue. Anyway, in pericarditis, Friction occurs. Those two members rub each other and that causes pain. You can listen the rubbing sound with a stethoscope in pericarditis. Putting a stethoscope, you can hear that sound. Okay. Sound of friction or rubbing. Here you see the space between visceral and parietal, that's the pericardial cavity. External of the heart. If you see the heart from outside, you can locate the chambers from outside because we know that atria, right and left, are located above and ventricles are located below, right? So, you can tell by looking there are some grooves by looking at those from outside, you can tell the location of atria and ventricles. Another way you can tell by pressing on the wall of the heart. Ventricular wall is much thicker than atrial wall. Who is thicker? Ventricles. So you can press and feel and tell this is the ventricle, this is the atrium. Now you tell me why the ventricular wall is or should be thicker than atrial wall. Ventricle sends the blood where? Out from the heart, right? To the lung or to the body. Right ventricle sends to the lung, deoxygenated blood, 
left ventricle sends oxygen blood to the body. You know that, right? Okay. Atrium does what? Receives the blood, right? So which one needs more power? Sending out, right? Receiving doesn't need power. So that's why ventricular wall is much thicker than the atrial wall. The atrium receives the blood and the atrium is sitting above the ventricle, right? And sends the blood to the ventricle, just sitting under it. So from here, to send blood here, you don't need to really contact very forcefully, right? So atrium just sends blood to the ventricle. Ventricle sends blood to the body or to the lung. Now you tell me, right ventricle sends blood, right is deoxygenated, right? Sends blood to the lungs. And left ventricle sends blood to the, which wall should be thicker? left because it sends far right throughout the body so that's why left ventricular wall is much thicker than the right ventricular wall now i told you you can see some groups on the surface of the heart what are those groups coronary sulcus sulcus is the group that separates atria and ventricles so by looking at that from outside you can tell Above the coronary sulcus, you have the atria. Below, you have the ventricle. Interventricular sulcus. Its name is telling you. There are two. Anterior, in the front of the heart. Posterior, in the back of the heart. In between what? Ventricles. That's why called interventricular. So that separates right and left ventricles. So here, uh, you see the front view of the heart. Here you have anterior interventricular sulcus. But remember, those groups get filled with fat and blood vessels, contain blood vessels. So groups contain fats and blood vessels. So that is the location where if you remove the fat and blood vessels, you will see a group anterior interventricular and this is the coronary sulcus goes to the back all the way so separates atria and ventricles here you see the valves and the large blood vessels take the blood out or bring the blood in and you see four sets of valves that I have already talked about. So from the right ventricle, pulmonary trunk takes the blood out. And then pulmonary trunk divides into pulmonary arteries. And blood goes to the lung, right? Pulmonary artery. Pulmonary means lungs. Pulmonary arteries take the blood to the lung. What kind of blood? deoxygenated and then pulmonary veins bring the blood back from the lung right again pulmonary what kind of oxygenated is it clear now left ventricle sends blood to the body through the aorta this is the aorta from the left ventricle blood goes to the aorta and to the body and vena cava I have already mentioned bring the blood back into the right atrium from the body. Here you see four sets of valves. Uh, you can make a section in the heart. That section, if you can make correctly, you can see four sets of vent, uh, valves there. Uh, left AV valve is also called mitral valve, I have mentioned. It is bicuspid. That means two cusps. Cusp means leaf-like structure. Like leaf. So, two cusps. Left AV valve is tricuspid because it has three leaf-like structures. Aortic semilunar, pulmonary semilunar, half moon. Both have three leaves. Three lips. Okay, or cusps. 
inside the heart you will see some string like structures string like structures those are called chordae tendinae chordae tendinae and they arise from the muscles inside the ventricles those muscles are called the papillary muscles so inside the ventricle you have papillary muscles and from those papillary muscles string like structures like this if this is the papillary muscle okay this is the papillary muscle from the papillary muscle strings arise those strings are called chordae tendin and the strings go where to av valve so this is the av valve will get attached to the av valve okay papillary muscle chordae tendin av valve so the strings or chordae tendin control the movement of the valves in the wall of the heart you have three layers if you see from outside to inside how many layers three outer most layer you see here now i told you the visceral pericardium is directly attached to the wall of the heart so the outer most thin layer is the visceral pericardium that is nothing but visceral pericardium that is also called ap cardium so epicardium is the outermost thin layer which is nothing but what visceral pericardium then you have thick middle layer that is the muscle cardiac muscle myo cardium middle thick cardiac muscle layer myo cardium that causes the contraction and relaxation muscle right and then innermost thin layer this is very thin is endocardium endo means inside you know that it is a thin layer of squamous cells endocardium so those are three layers in the wall of the heart if the myocardium is thick the force of contraction will be stronger anatomy of the cardiac muscle if you see the cardiac muscle tissue under the microscope you have seen in np1 you remember you have cylindrical fibers striations those are the lines and intercalated discs are present inside the cardiac muscle fiber you will find a lot of mitochondria why you need lot of mitochondria anybody continuously working right your heart needs lot of atp mitochondria produce atp we know that mitochondria is the power house right another name of mitochondria is the power house atp your heart even when you are sleeping right your other muscles are kind of relaxed your heart cannot relax if heart relaxes what will happen <laughs> so heart cannot relax it's beating 24 hours throughout the life it's continuous supply of atp centrally located single nucleus intercalated discs now in the intercalated disc you have two types of channels so this is one heart muscle fiber cylindrical striations this is another heart muscle fiber striations and when two heart muscle fibers are attached here you have the intercalated disc now in intercalated disc you have two types of intercellular junctions gap junction you have learned about this gap junction tight junction desmosome 
in intercalated disk you have gap junctions so there are channels in gap junctions we know that fluid can go from one side to another side so ions can easily move quickly move from one fiber to the next because you have gap junctions right open but you also have desmosomes Desmosomes do what? I mentioned in NP1 if anybody remember. Zipper like strong connection. You know, zipper you use in your cloth like this. Linker glycoproteins connect them, okay? So very strongly. So two things here. There are gaps, right? Also strong desmosomes. So what happens? When the heart muscle fibers contact, no muscle fiber can tell, I will just sit, I will not work. Have to, because they are all strongly held, right? Like if you all hold your hands strongly together, you know, everybody has to move. When you move right? That is one. And another is, they can talk to each other very fast because ions can move quickly from one fiber to the next because you have the channels open, right? So, because of those two things, the heart, all heart muscle fibers work as a single unit, as an unit, because they are connected, right? So, like one big unit. And that is called syncytium. The word syncytium means an unit. Although many fibers, but they are so well connected in those two ways that all muscle fibers work as an unit. That is called the functional syncytium. Is it here somewhere? Syncytium? Yeah. The last word. Syncytium. Okay, see many mitochondria. Coronary circulation is heart's own circulation. Coronary, I have already shown you the small blood vessels that supply blood to the wall of the heart. So, coronary circulation supplies blood to the wall of the heart or heart muscle. Coronary arteries and veins belong to the coronary circulation. So you have coronary arteries and also you have veins. We will see what are the important arteries in coronary circulation and important veins in coronary circulation. But before you know that, just know that coronary circulation has a couple of important properties. What are the important properties of coronary circulation? Number one, for example, this is one coronary artery. This is another artery in coronary circulation. You will see many collaterals, lateral branches arise from the coronary Arteries. So, these are called collaterals, collateral branches. Okay, two collaterals, many collaterals. Number two, anastomosis. What happens? These collaterals get connected to each other. They form branches and get connected to each other. Anastomosis. Cis is singular. If I say S E S, we have many. So we we'll say anastomosis. Those two are important properties of coronary circulation. There are many collaterals, many anastomosis. This 
is very helpful. Just think that if you have blockage here, what will happen? The blood will blood is not getting here only this way, but blood is also getting this way, right? So that uh, will keep the muscle, heart muscle healthy still because blood will go in different route. So does the anastomosis like prevent that? Right, prevent the death of or uh, if blockage occurs, then that area will not get oxygen and nutrition, right? But because of collateral, in many instances, although uh, patient has blockage, but patient doesn't realize until the heart rate gets really bad. When you go like after 30 years or 20 years, they say you got a old blockage in the heart. You have we have found old blockage, but patient didn't realize because there are collaterals, right? So the heart muscle survived, got less blood, but in a different route, different path, right? So, but if really big block occurs, then uh, in that case, uh, definitely uh, myocardial infarction will occur, the tissue will die, or ischemia, uh, angina pectoris, pain will be felt. Uh, so, so, these two are important properties of coronary circulation. Now, what are the arteries of coronary circulation and veins? Arteries. A right and left coronary arteries, marginal artery, circumflex artery, interventricular arteries. Veins are small cardiac, the great cardiac, anterior cardiac. Also, you write another one, middle cardiac. That is also a big one. Middle cardiac, small cardiac, anterior cardiac, great cardiac, and all these from all these veins blood enter into a short wide vein in the back of the heart that is not listed here that is called the coronary sinus you also have that one coronary sinus is a wide short in the back of the heart where these veins all these veins give the blood to here you see uh, some of those arteries you see right coronary artery left coronary artery Left coronary artery and right coronary arteries arise from the aorta. So, they are the branches of ascending aorta. What happens, you see, uh, this is the heart and when the blood, aorta takes the blood out from the left ventricle, we know that left ventricle, aorta takes the blood out, immediately after that from the outer two branches those are the first branches of aorta arise and enter into the wall of the heart so oxygenated blood goes to the wall of the heart right and left coronary artery arise from the very beginning of the ascending aorta okay and then from those two other branches arise for example you see here left coronary artery divides into circumflex. Circumflex means going around, circling around like this. Circumflex artery and anterior interventricular artery. In between the ventricles, you have the groove you remember. <coughs> Marginal artery, you see here, uh, from the right coronary artery, the marginal arteries uh, have arised. Veins, here you see that short white vein in the, this is the back of the heart, that is the coronary sinus, this one. And you see other veins, great cardiac vein, anterior cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, 
middle cardiac vein they have shown here so you can see the middle cardiac vein okay so those are the veins here you again see those veins this is the back of the heart you see the coronary sinus and other veins couple of clinical conditions if any blockage occurs in the coronary circulation if the blockage is not complete blockage some blood is going to the tissue in that case tissue is not getting enough oxygen and nutrition right but getting some because of partial blockage in that case tissue will produce pain due to lack of oxygen so the pain will be felt could be felt in the chest shoulder or even all the way to the it can go to the finger that is called the referred pain right far from felt far from the origin originating in the heart but you can feel here so that is called angina pectoris angina means pain pectoris means what pectoral area pectoral area means what chest right pectoral so chest pain very simple chest pain is angina pectoris due to insufficient blood flow or oxygen in the tissue now you know sometime uh, the patient in that case will put some medicine under the tongue right nitroglycerin or similar drug that will do what make the blood vessel wider so more blood will flow right take oxygen so the pain will go up the clear vasodilatation if the artery is blocked completely and there is no collateral or anastomosis there that tissue will die because of no oxygen makes sense so that tissue will die and that is called myocardial infarction death of the tissue myocardial infarction which is also known as heart attack we say heart attack so those are related to the circulation right coronary circulation heart sound uh, when you listen the sound of the heart through stethoscope you will hear lub dub two sounds lub dub lub dub heart sounds are produced during the closure of the valves not during the opening of the valves during the closure of the valves first sound is heard during the closure of av valves both close at the same time and second sound is heard during the closure of semi lunar valves you know there are uh, two av valves and two semi lunar valves 